my question is, it seems to me that at least in the case of anorexia recovery, ketones are not the mechanism of action from ketogenic metabolic therapy uh, for a few reasons. One of which is the fact that during starvation, ketones are produced, yet starvation leads to more food restriction with anorexia. Do you agree? And if so, any thoughts on what could be the mechanism of action? And are you aware of any research to isolate the mechanism of action? Thank you. Yeah. So my, my theory in brain energy is that the mechanism of action is actually mitochondrial health. Um, and that ketones are one path to that. But you're right. Ketones can be a form of starvation, which is what's happening in people with anorexia when they are restricting and losing a lot of weight and malnourish. They can have ketones, but ketones aren't going to be enough to counteract the negative effects of starvation. Um, so ketones alone aren't enough. And if ketones alone were enough, even without, even if we put starvation aside, I, trust me, I wish ketones alone were the magic bullet that the ketogenic diet was. Because what that would mean is that people could drink exogenous ketones. They could just drink, buy a bottle of ketones, drink them, and they would be all set. And we would be curing mental illness right and left, and that would be wonderful. Um, and people wouldn't have to change their diet at all. Unfortunately, I think exogenous ketones can play a role and can play different types of roles for different people in different circumstances. And maybe we can get into that if we want, but they're not, they're not as powerful as what the ketogenic diet is doing. And I believe the ketogenic diet is ultimately restoring mitochondrial health. And, and that means mitochondrial signaling. That means mitochondrial energy production. That also means mitochondrial. So mitochondria are taking food and they're turning some of it into energy, most of it probably into energy, but they're also turning some of it into building blocks for proteins, for membranes, for all sorts of neurotransmitters and hormones. The, the food that we eat gets turned into all of those molecules and cell parts and mitochondria are actually instrumental in degrading the food to a certain level. And then those molecules get shuttled off to turn into these other things. And so one of the challenges with anorexia when people are restricting is yes, they can be in ketosis, but they're almost always malnourished. Um, so they're absolutely malnourished in terms of calories they're also often malnourished in terms of vitamins and nutrients that are important to mitochondrial function and metabolic function and health. And so you could have a loved one who was very ill, but in ketosis from starvation. Um, the ketogenic diet, however, assuming the person is getting adequate nutrition, so you want it to be a well-balanced kind of therapeutic uh, ketogenic diet that's going to include not only enough calories, but also enough nutrients um, and vitamins and minerals and everything else. Um, and in that case, it can be restorative. It can restore mitochondrial health in brain cells and, and other cells, liver cells and muscle cells and elsewhere. And that can restore balance in the body and restore brain function and allow people to do well. Yeah. All good point. Yeah, the protein deficit too, uh, with extended fasting or uh, energy uh, depletion is will impact all many different factors that affect mitochondrial health, like protein synthesis, for example. So. Uh, yeah, when you're anorexic, uh, yeah, ketones are elevated, but not having the building blocks, uh, to ensure proper mitochondrial function and signaling and all the, uh, for the mitochondria to make other things like neurotransmitters and other building blocks, they need, uh, amino acids and that's, uh, you're deficient in that. Yeah. So let me take the next question, uh, Victoria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so away. actually this is from the first question. It was a two-part question. Uh, 
Acute psychosis is treated with Haldol, Haloperidol, typical antipsychotic, uh, and it works really fast, like in seconds if it's given ID. Uh, in, in a patient that's being, if, if a patient is undergoing ketone metabolic therapy, uh, is the standard of care to administer something, do you get, revert back to something like Haldol to control the ac acute psychosis? So I guess what they're getting at is that can ketogenic therapies, uh, be used to treat acute psychosis. And if a person is on, uh, has kind of weaned off the drugs and is on ketogenic therapies, ketogenic therapy, and they have a relapse or they break out of remission, like a break, do you administer something like Halidol again, just to get that acute psychosis under control? So oh, it, it, I, I kind of hear two different questions. So one question is if somebody has a new onset psychotic episode, so right now ketogenic therapies and metabolic therapies are not standard of care. And uh, as a licensed uh, clinician, I am required by law and ethics to administer standards of care. Um, and so if, if somebody has their very first psychotic episode and is treated by a healthcare professional, they should be getting an antipsychotic medication. I am hoping that years from now, I don't know how fast it can happen, but I'm hoping that years from now that may change. And I'm working toward that day when it will change because you know, if we look at the long-term outcomes of antipsychotic therapy for psychotic disorders, it's not always great, but there is no doubt antipsychotics save people's lives. Antipsychotics can prevent people from being violent toward themselves or others. Antipsychotics um, uh, can sometimes stop symptoms, can sometimes put psychotic symptoms into full, complete remission. And I will tell you firsthand, I have seen it. Um, as a clinician, I have seen people. Usually if it goes into full remission, we don't call that schizophrenia, it's circular logic. We call that major depression with psychotic features, or we call it bipolar disorder. We, we come up with different labels, depending on whether the symptoms go into remission or not. And using that same circular logic kind of loop, if the symptoms get, don't get better, then we call it schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Um, <clears throat> so for better or worse, we still have to use standards of care. Again, I'm working for the day when maybe we'll start implementing metabolic therapies as a first line treatment, but that day is not here yet. In terms of somebody who is off medications, stable on a ketogenic diet, and then has a relapse, um, you, you brought that question up. Yeah. And there's no doubt I have those patients. I just described yeah. those two patients who got off of antipsychotics and were quite stable for many years. So if I had a patient who is stable on ketogenic therapy and then has an increase in psychotic symptoms, I'm going to look for what caused that exacerbation and try to address it. Okay. At this point in my career, every single time that has happened, there has been a very clear unequivocal cause. So one, they break the diet they stop the diet, their ketones plummet, and their symptoms come back. The treatment for that is really easy. Get back on the diet ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I actually have them do a therapeutic water fast for one or two days. Um, don't eat anything. Just drink water. It will get your ketones up quickly. That is the best way to get better. That makes the assumption, though, that that patient is safe. So the patient has to be safe. If the patient is a danger to themselves or others, yeah. they're going to end up hospitalized and the hospital is gonna start antipsychotics again. Yeah. Um, if some other common reasons that patients can get into trouble, sleep deprivation is a huge one. If they pull all-nighters for whatever reason, or they have a really stressful life event and they're not sleeping, they can get, 
psychotic symptoms or manic symptoms or other symptoms. The treatment for that is really easy too. Sleep. We need to get you sleep. So again, I'm going to make sure they're safe to do this on an outpatient basis, but then we're going to work on maintain the ketogenic diet, but we've got to get you sleeping. For some of those patients, I will definitely use sleeping prescription strength sleep medications to get them to sleep mm. if needed. So um, usually I'm not going to antipsychotics, not right away, but if prescription strength sleep medicines aren't getting them to sleep, then I would use antipsychotics if needed just on a very temporary basis for a few days to force them to sleep. And that will often break the cycle and then they'll get more stable and then I'll stop whatever meds I had to start. Mm -hmm.